Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language, currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, previously at UCLA, and as of August 2017, happy to be returning home to the Rocky Mountains to teach at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm continuing to answer questions posed by my Patreon supporters about three weeks ago on my Patreon page, and today I'll be answering a question asked by supporter Cameron Kemper, who also happens to have been a student of mine at the University of California, Los Angeles. Cameron asks about hell in Old Norse myth, and also how that might be related to the concept of hell in uh, Christian doctrine. Well, first of all, let's look at the word hell. Hell in both Old Norse and Old English is from the same root. These words are exact cognates, and they come from an Indo-European root, kel. That root, kel, uh, becomes something spelled C-E-L in Latin, in the Italic branch of the Indo-European languages, and kel meaning to hide or to cover through Latin borrowings has given us words in English like con seal, which is from this root together with the prefix con, with, or cellar, the place where you cover your food. But in the Germanic languages like Old English and Old Norse, this K becomes an H by the regular law of sound change called Grimm's Law. So we have several words in English besides hell that are derived from the same root for to cover or hide. For instance, helmet, the thing that covers your head, or a hole, something where something might be hidden underneath the earth, or a hollow, or something that is hollow, or a holster where you might put your six gun. Hell is then just originally a covered place, and so we might think of it as originally meaning simply the grave. If you are in hell, you are in your grave, you are covered by the earth. But it's not surprising that in old Germanic belief, just as in all around the world, this leads into a conception of the dead as living in a sort of kingdom parallel with the political states of the living. From that, we get this conception of hell as being sort of an underground realm presided over by a uh, deity or deity-like figure who, in Old Norse at least, is also called Hell. We have no records from Old English or any other Old Germanic languages about this figure named Hell. There, we're relying only on uh, Norse sources, as usual, actually. This word, Hell, or in Old English, Hell or Hella, sometimes it has an E written at the end, is used in Old English to translate Latin infernus, uh, which is the Latin word for hell in uh, early Christian literature. We also see the Gothic cognate halia used to translate Greek hades, hades, in the Gothic Bible. So very early on, there was a feeling among translators that hell did translate the Christian conception of hell, infernus, Gehenna, hades. But these realms are not really all that similar when you look at uh, what little is talked about of hell in Norse mythology. In the Prose Edda, when Snorri Sturluson mentions hell, he does seem to imply that it's pretty unpleasant, but we have to remember that Snorri is probably uh, more than subtly influenced by his own Christian conception of hell as an unpleasant place where you're sent to be punished. Consider the fact that in the modern Scandinavian languages, um, for instance in Norwegian, the word for hell has been compounded today with an old word viti that means punishment. So for instance in Norwegian you say helvete is the normal word for hell now. Of course, originally that means hell punishment. But it still sneaks through in Snorri's description that hell may not be entirely miserable. When the god Baldr dies, he is brought to hell because he doesn't die in battle, he doesn't get to go to Valhall, and uh, he is sort of feasted by hell. She prepares the benches with straw strewn comfortably over them. She has good mead brewed. She seems to have quite a banquet prepared for him and his wife Nana, and when Odin's son Hermother shows up there to ask if there's some way to get Baldur back, Baldur doesn't seem to be uh, an agonized prisoner, and in fact he's even allowed to walk Hermother out and to give him gifts to take back to Odin, just as Nana sends a gift back for Frigg and another for Fula. So Hel has a sort of more permeable boundary uh, in the sense that people can come and go, and in the sense that the people who are there 
may be treated a little bit more like honored guests than as uh, sinful souls to be tortured. We don't know the geography of hell very well. It is often described as being underground, sort of, but it's also described as being to the north, uh, and it's difficult to reconcile that with the underground. Maybe the passage is toward the north, but it's still underneath us. Uh, also, sometimes it seems to be visible from overland from different parts of the Norse cos uh, mythological cosmology. For instance, in the poem Forskirnes or Skirnismal on the Poetic Edda, Skirner tells Gerther, the giant woman that he's courting for the god Freyr, that she will be imprisoned in a cave overlooking hell. So there must be somewhere where hell can be seen from the surface level of one of the other realms, maybe Midgarder where humans live, or Jotunheimer where the giants like Gerther originally live. So we have to remember in general that the uh, Norse mythological geography is pretty vague. Things can change where they are in relation to one another from story to story. And in general, it seems more like there is uh, a stable notion that these places are reached by passages that are far away or difficult to use than that they have any fixed location with respect to where we live. In addition to the Queen of Hell, whose name is Hell, who Snorri tells us is half uh, the color of flesh and half the color blur, which most translators translate as black, but which I translate as blue following many years of translate, uh, studying color terms in Old Norse. Uh, this trans this uh, description of her as being half flesh colored and half blue uh, has led most artists to depict her as being split in half down the middle, down her nose, or one side of her looks dead because the color blur is associated with death and corpses and one half looks alive, but it's not clear that's necessarily what Snorri means. Hel is the daughter of Loki and the uh, giant woman Angerboda, offerer of sorrow. Uh, her siblings include Fenrir the wolf and the Midgar serpent. And other inhabitants of Hel include a dog whose name is Garmer. Snorri in his prose edda seems to understand Garmer as a separate figure from Fenrir because he has him killing Tyr at Ragnarok and a separate battle from Odin's battle with the wolf Fenrir. But in the poem Volospal and the Poetic Edda, which I encourage you to check out my translation of as well as some of my videos about, uh, Fenrir and Garmer seem to be the same figure, particularly because of the way that Garmer is described as being chained up in hell, and he is chained up in a place called Gnipahelir, somewhere in hell. This appears to mean something like Cliff Cave. Helir, which means cave, is also from the same root uh, related to hell, because a cave is something that sort of covers or hides. There is a gate to hell that is usually called Nogrindr, that's corpse gates, but it is also sometimes called Helgrindr, literally simply hell gates. In general, hell doesn't seem to be a place of punishment, as I said before. It is a default destination for the dead. It may simply originally have been a uh, poetic flourish for describing someone as being in their grave. And, as I've discussed in another video on the afterlife of Norse myth, sometimes the dead seem to simply remain in their grave without going into another world at all. But it's very likely that beliefs and traditions about hell changed over time, and that the fairly late traditions that we read about in the Eddas uh, may not reflect exactly what people believed in the Viking Age either. From the University of California, Berkeley, I'm wishing you all the best and thanking you for your questions and interest.